Do you want to export a hundred thousand rows or one million values per query, whatever comes first, from Power BI to Excel or CSV or whatever? This is the video for you. I finally have a workaround to the video I made last year, a year ago. So, so cool. Let me show you. Okay, so last month on, on you know the May update, they actually released a new flow called Run and Query Against the Dataset. And what that little thing does is it allows you to export data from Power BI to whatever you want with the 100,000 rows limit, which I think 100,000 rows is, is reasonable, right? So I actually tested it, but I could not figure out the, the queries. Like, well, how do I write the DAX thing? until I saw a video from Goldberg that said, hey, use the Performer Analyzer. And that made me understood how the query works, and I'm going to show you here. Make sure you subscribe to his blog. I'm going to post a link down below. Give him some love. Huh? <laughs> this wouldn't be possible without him. Okay, let me show you how it's done. So we're actually going to use the same example that I had on the previous video. And for that, for those of you that haven't seen it, I'm going to paste from that video up to where we create a button and then I come back and then I show you how to create the new flow. Now I'm going to post here a link in case you have you have seen there already you know how to create a button you can just jump to the flow directly okay so whatever it comes first. How do you do that? You click, in, click into the uh, visualization and what we're going to do is we're going to export the date on this chart sales by week number as an example. So the first thing is it tells you is add the data. So sales, put in sales. Whatever fields you put in here is the ones that you can actually do something later on, right? And then you have year month. Uh, I think is like that. Now we have our data, it says here, set up your flow. So select edit in the dot, dot, dot. Thank for that because I wouldn't have found it ever. And then it takes you to the entire flow experience in Power BI. That is so neat, so beautifully integrated. Now, I already have the two flows created, but obviously I'm going to show you how to create them. So let's start from the beginning. I'm going to reuse one of these templates and uh, modify it. it. It is a lot faster, actually, than starting from scratch. So I believe you have a button, right? Okay, so first of all, let's try to create that DAX query. So the query that will determine what data to get exported and then we'll create the flow for it. So the tip that Gilbert and also the, the Power BI team actually, they did have that recommendation in here. At the beginning, I just didn't read it. They said you can use the performer analyzer to copy the query that you want. So what you can do is you can go to View, Performer Analyzer, Start Recording, and then Refresh. And what this thing does is it goes and generates all the queries that are needed in order to retrieve the data for the visualizations. And you can copy that query in order to paste it then into the flow because the syntax is not what you expect. So it has the name of the visual. You see here sales by week. So if you open sales by week in copy query, let's say that we want to export this data out like we did on the previous video. So if you paste that into a notepad, this is the query that gets generated, right? So you get a, you define a uh, variable and then you execute the variable here and then you sort it any way you want. Now, you can see that there is a top N thingy in there because obviously for performance reasons, Power BI is not retrieving all the data. So to be true to the performance, it will show you whatever it is to retrieve. We don't want this part at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that. So if when you want to create your export, this is the part that you need to know. So if you go here and copy, and then we're going to create a new table. And I'm going to paste it there so you can actually see what you're getting. Right? You can see that there's like not too many uh, rows. I want to generate more rows than that to prove that you can get more than a thousand. So we're going to modify this a little bit. So we're going to get a calendar date, not year. 
and then I'm going to get order ID and product ID. You know, this is the Northwind data set. It doesn't have a lot of data. So <laughs> you have to get creative. This is 2,155 rows. Now that I have created my query, I go back to the template. I paste it in there. We're going to execute this variable, not that variable. And then here, we're going to sort by date. And then, I don't know if we need to have sales. I don't know if it needs to be there or not. Let's put it there. You copy everything. It's actually that simple. And now that we have our beautiful query and we know how to create them ourselves now, we're going to go to edit and modify the flow, okay? So here's where we left it. We are going to now add a new step and run a query, a query against the data set. You need to, of course, have published this beforehand so you can go and grab the data from the service. That's where it goes and grabs it. So I have already published this. It's on the Northwind workspace. And the data set is called Northwind, the same as the report or data you see there. And this is where I paste my query. The next step that I do is create the CSV table from the table that was generated on the previous step and then we create a file on SharePoint or <laughs> whatever you want it. It's up to you where you put it. Create a file SharePoint and then I'm going to use a library, a folder path, and now we are going for the file name. We want to have a new file created every time. If you want to have the file updated, you create it first and then instead of create file, you update file. So for the file name, we're going to have UTC now, which will actually give a timestamp for when this is created. Click OK. And then we're going to have underscore sales.csv. And the file content is going to be the output of the previous step. Save. That's all you need to do. Save and apply. Go back. And then control click because we are in Power BI Desktop. You won't need to do that on the service. Okay, let's go and see if this worked. So this is the folder where I saved my... Uh, here we have it, the file, and you'll see that this thing has all the rows. You can see them, 100,000 rows, 100,000 rows. And now you know how to create your queries and you don't need to do this with the use of a button. You can use like, you know, a schedule, anything that you can do in Power BI. You can trigger the flow any way you like. You're not forced to just push of a button. So, so cool. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you, Gilbert, a million for the idea. Put me on the right track and I will see you again next week. I hope you enjoy the video.